This is Phil Stamper, the president of wrestling, and you're watching the Three Count Podcast. And always remember to trust in Phil. I'm a mess of new that she raised. I all of your hate won't change now. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. My name is Clifford Red Dog Miller, and I am the only one on here so far, so expect a run in at some point like we seem to have happened a lot but this is the three count podcast now entering which means one thing we have a special guest for you today now you can see this man all over clw if you don't know what that is cactus league wrestling uh he is a talent he is a member of the united states air force and as you can tell i'm repping as well so let's give it up for roland steel yeah man how's it going bruh I am so hyped because I listened to your interview with our good friend, Justin Del Rio. Um, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta get this man on the show. I was like, yeah, man, he's a good Hammer. guy. It was, it was a good, uh, good interview with him. Yeah. I was like, I was, I was, I was captivated. I'm not going to lie, man. And I was like, well, we do this too. So I'm, I'm gonna bring him on the show too and talk to awesome. him. I'm glad you guys reached out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. And again, man, thank you again, just for spending some time with us and like talking to us. Yes, sir. So for our listeners who don't know who you are, because actually we're in Maryland, I know Justin is up in Connecticut, so in the Mid-Atlantic, for those who don't know who you are, please tell our listeners, who is the American Hammer, Roland Steele? Uh, all right, so uh, I'm a professional wrestler. Uh, I'm also in the, in the U.S. Air Force. Uh, been in the Air Force for three, four years now. Um, I'm actually from Delaware, so I'm from the East Coast, but because of the Air Force, I've moved out uh, to Albuquerque, New Mexico at Kirtland Air Force Base. Um, you know, I'm new to wrestling. I'm in my first year, so I'm just try trying to get things get things going. Of course, you know, COVID kind of slowing everything down, but um, I'm working hard and uh, trying to get somewhere, you know? Yeah, I feel exactly where you're coming from because – you know, I was, I, it's funny how you mentioned it too. Like I was Air Force from 2006 to 2012 and right. then I got out and I was stationed actually at Hickam Air Force Base and yeah. I didn't move, right? <laughs> I spent five years there and then I went from, I moved to Massachusetts to Georgia to Maryland and I was like, bro, like I was supposed to do that stuff while I was in the service, not while right. I was out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I understand the whole pick up and move uh, scenario, man. And this is like, I'm in my first year as well. Like I'm actually being trained um, over here by uh, Sick and Taylor. So a lot of people who are familiar with his Lego matches and watch him all over the place, they know. <laughs> it's a great dude. So tell us more about you. Like, how is it like that you're able to juggle two careers as far as like, one with the Air Force, because obviously we know duty calls first, and then right. you know, still able to manage, um, like, the wrestling workload. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, it is a little bit of a juggling act. Uh, but as, uh, as far as my leadership goes, they're all really good about everything. Uh, you know, uh, I usually get out of work uh, at certain times if I know I have practice or if I have somewhere to be, if I have a show to go to. Uh, they're pretty good about either letting me take leave or, you know, giving me the day off or et cetera, et cetera. But then, of course, if they need me, like you said, uh, duty calls. So I'm always, uh, always ready to be there later and miss practice or miss a show if that's what is needed. Yeah, I, I feel that all the time, man. I was working those. We, uh, when I first got out to my first duty station, we had uh, three eight-hour shifts or two 12-hour shifts. Right. So we started, I started off on the three eight-hour shifts, and then they're like, all right, cool. So you've had enough of this, these mids. We're going to just go ahead and put you on, a, on these 12-hour shifts from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I was like, man, I'm never going to have a life outside of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, our schedules are pretty good, honestly. They, uh, they do a pretty good job at not overworking us for sure. Oh, thank God, because <laughs> in being being stationed out um, at the DGS world, it's that's not a thing. They don't care. Right. <laughs> I right. remember getting home one time. It was it was like it was like eight thirty in the morning. I got home and my mission was done at six. Right. So I got off mission. I get I get home at like eight thirty because, you know, I do PT afterwards. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so I, started, I got home. 
legit hit the bed at 8.30, got a call at 8.35. Hey, we need help with the mission. Can you come back in and help us set this up? I'm like, yeah. I be guess there. so, yeah. right? Yeah, I'll exactly. I'll be there in 35. <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember, I remember the killer days, man. I was like, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not into this. Yeah, we definitely have some that are like that too. Like if it's a mission day, I'm always in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be here a long time today. Like even if it's planned to go well and it does go well, I always try to plan in my head for it to be a lot longer than it actually is. Yeah, it's no doubt, man. No doubt at all. Uh, so my next question for you, man, is like now you're in your first year, man. Like how, like what is driving you to want to be in the business? Um, you know, I just uh, honestly love performing in front of people when everything comes down to it. Uh, in high school, I was a pretty athletic kid. Uh, I did, you know, rugby, uh, track and field, cross country. Um, and then I also was a theater kid. Uh, so I liked performing in front of people. Uh, you know, I was the lead in a few plays I liked performing and then you put those two things together and uh, you got wrestling, honestly. So honestly, it just, I started a year ago and uh, I've missed maybe one practice because of a mission. And uh, I, I love this business. I go on as many road trips as I can. Uh, I just, even if I'm not wrestling, if I just get to, you know, like shake some hands, uh, that's all that really matters to me. Right. I hear that. And it's it's cool because I I talked to so you're actually the first person I've talked to that was either in or prior service right so you're right. actually the first person that's been on the show that way and um it, but when I go and talk to other people about people who are like in the service man they are were in the service or even guys who were like um, was another one I hear uh, like collegiate wrestlers right right that like we're the most trainable because we're the most adaptable, but that mm -hmm. we're always down for the mission, which is like, I always think about that. I'm like, yeah, I love, I love the business too. And I love, like I, I show up, it's, we have a training over here at, it starts at 10 30, but right. my trainer gets annoyed with me because I show up at nine 45 to start, <laughs> start setting up. So we got tear, we got put up the ring and then I of stay, course. Stay, tear yeah. down the ring. And I'm always, I, I always, I pride myself on that. Just like I'm sure you do as well, that when we show up, we're, we're the first ones there. We're the last ones to check mm -hmm. out, but we're the always one, the, we're always the ones that ask the most questions. Cause we're like, we got to get details, man. We, we have right. to have details. Yeah. There's uh, only a few things that give me anxiety uh, in this world. And one of them is being late. So uh, <laughs> I absolutely despise being late. Sometimes, you know, my wife, uh, she'll, she'll be taking a little bit long doing her makeup or something. And I'll be like, come on, we got to go. We got to go. We're going to be late. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm always early. Uh, but yeah, I definitely feel that. Uh, I think I've picked it up pretty, pretty quickly for the most part. If I, if I see something and I'm asked to do it uh, one or two tries, usually I can, I can get it down. Of course, I, I still got to clean it up, but usually I can, I can perform it after one or two tries. Yeah. I, f I feel like a lot of people like that about, guys like us like i'll just right. put it out there and my wife's the same way too right it's like i know like she'll be like hey we're gonna go get dinner at six and by like 5 30 i'm looking at her like you're not even stressed <laughs> where are we go yep. <laughs> so yes I, right. I i hate like i hate that and actually you'll be the first person i tell on this podcast this my biggest pet peeve is and i've kind of gotten loosened up right is like it's tardiness right but like the biggest part that I really have an issue with is um, like if I, if I ask you to be somewhere and like you, like you miss, right. Chalk it up. Right. It's kind of an L, but if you right. give me the time and then I try to meet you on that time and you don't show up at that point, I'm just like, I'm annoyed. Oh like, yeah. You're out. <laughs> I don't want to talk <laughs> to you. With you. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> I am not, cause clearly you don't care about I was like, you don't care about your own time. You clearly don't care about my time. And I was like, this right. Is, like, uh, I just get annoyed with that too, man. <laughs> yeah. So like in, and then when you're in training too, right? Like um, you're always like asking questions, but then like when you're trying to get the answer, but then like guy B like decides he wants to put his two cents in and you're like, I didn't know you were the trainer. Can you like that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like healthy criticism. So, you know, if, uh, if 
one of my fellow students has something to add. Yeah, I do it a lot, if we're being honest. So I, you'd probably hate me in class. But uh, if I like see something in class that like, if someone's having trouble with something, like I really like watch everyone when they're doing things. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is how I do it. So maybe if I let them know, you know, like for example, even if you're just doing an up and over, right? Sometimes I see people grab the ropes at the corners and they grab really far away. And for me, grabbing closer is way easier because it lets me get, you know, more push, more core stability. Right. And uh, so like a lot of the times if I'll see that, I'm like, hey, if, if you just try this real quick, you know, uh, it'll probably help you. So that, that's the kind of guy that I am. So I like it when if someone sees something that I'm doing that maybe could be better this if they speak up. Oh, I was just meaning by like when the instructor is talking, like you shouldn't be talking. Gotcha. I am yeah, all yeah, about yeah, for sure. I am all about getting criticism. Trust me, in my first year, I'm not gonna put my nose up at anybody. Right. <laughs> Letting everybody come talk to me, like, hey man, this is it is what it is at this point. Like, yeah, every, for sure. Everything I tell everybody, um, I, I live by CM Punk's kind of life, where it's like I'm a white belt for life. So you can just right. like, keep teaching me everything, and I'll right. write it down. Like I'd, that's the way to be for sure. Yeah. So let me know, man, more about you. Like I know um, you recently, and by the time this episode airs, um, it'll already be, well, you announced it already. Um, ECCW, man, like talk to us about the new promotion. And I, I've already seen your promo video, by the way, I'm a huge fan of the gimmick. Thank you. Because I, I want to do the same gimmick too. And now I have to find <laughs> it because you're way cooler than I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's a good gimmick because you know it, it hits close to home you know being in, in the military it's very easy to connect to that right uh i'm actually in two schools now uh instead of just one i just started my second school and uh one of the the teachers there uh they said uh you know they like the way i do things because when i'm giving promos they uh they feel that I believe what I'm saying. It's not like I'm trying to convince myself while also trying to convince you that I believe what I'm actually saying. And uh, so honestly, dude, if, if it's the thing you want to go with, I, I think you should, because it's really easy to connect with. And uh, for, for us, at least really easy to connect with. And uh, it, it gets over. It's a, it's a great gimmick. I love doing it personally. Yeah. And by the way, you have fly gear. Like I just have to like keep compliments <laughs> on everything. Like Thank I'm putting you. you over for everything because I was like, I've seen like the way it looks. I like everything about him. I'm just like, damn dude, like you got to let it be known. Like you're a hundred percent in it to win it. Like you're breaking necks if you have to. <laughs> for sure. And then as far as elite combat, uh, they're a pretty new promotion. Uh, they still haven't had their first show, but uh, their, their talent is they're stacked. Honestly. Uh, they have a lot of people from out here near Colorado, uh, Balaam Links, Damon Ace, Lilith Grimm. Um, they're all already, you know, uh, set to go and uh, work for them. Uh, they're all great talent, and uh, they're based in North Carolina, so back on the East Coast. So I, I'm glad to be, you know, on the East Coast as well, because I usually, you know, I'm here in, you know, California, Arizona, Nevada, uh, Texas, all that type of area, the, the Southwest. Uh, is where I usually am. So it's good to, you know, start expanding my horizons and uh, trying to get all over the place. But they seem like they're going to be a really good company and I'm uh, happy to be with them. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And then like, so who's been like your biggest, like, like, mot like I don't want to say motivator. Who's been like your biggest inspiration and who's been able to give you like the best advice so far, like while you're working on your career? Um... So my biggest inspiration would probably, I mean, my, my coach is Gino Rivera. Uh, he's, he's great. Honestly, everything he does, uh, everything he helps us with, like he's a, a full coach. Like he doesn't just, you know, teach us wrestling moves. He teaches us everything about the business, whether it be social media or gear or et cetera, et cetera, everything there is to know. Uh, he, he knows it and he helps us with it. So honestly, he's probably my biggest inspiration um just trying to you know get a lot of people know who he is and uh, a lot of people think he's great and i just want to be known like him you know uh when someone thinks of my name i want them to think oh yeah that's a great talent i i want him to be on my show oh yeah definitely man well that's awesome too like you know you're like my uh just like you know just like i said my trainer you know he's like i'm always in his ear and like he of actually course. just right before we actually did this interview, he like sent me a message and was like, you yeah, know, I'm glad to call you my brother and I'm able to teach you things. Uh, it's when you get to work that kind of relationship and then you have someone that you can kind of like, not only just melt with, but then like 
they totally get you. They're like, well, we can teach him like the whys behind the whys. Like those are like, right. those are always important. So yeah, it's, it's great that you have someone that you can kind of lean on, especially because I know a lot of people say they don't have that person like right off the jump. So when you find right. that person, yeah, you're right. You just lock on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly what I'm trying to do. I always try to, you know, pick his mind, uh, see what I can do better, see, you know, what I, what I need to change. Like I said, I'm a big fan of criticism, healthy criticism and taking that and learning from it and always trying to be better. So what would you say is the hardest part so far about like being a, well, actually between like wrestling and the military, would you say like the early stages of like training or your CDCs? Uh, as far as the military goes, um, I'd say the hardest part, I didn't find, I didn't think basic was, was too, too hard. Honestly, of course, you know, they try to put you through the stress test and everything. And that's, that's cool. I was, uh, I ended up accidentally volunteering to be my dorm chief, uh, in, in BMT. Uh, so I ended up doing that. And of course, you know, that added a little bit of stress, but you know, I graduated to like an honor grad and everything like that. And uh, I try to live the excellence in all we do. So, and CDCs, uh, we have a lot of CDCs in our career field, actually. So, of course, that it took a while, but it was nothing hard. Uh, I'm a pretty good test taker, really good at memorizing things. Uh, so, I honestly just remembered all the all the all the questions I memorized in my head. All, I memorized all the answers, and I went in and I got I got like an 85 or something like that after not studying as much as I probably should have. <laughs> but other than that, you know, just trying to get along with everyone. There's a lot of different personalities in the military and trying to cooperate with everyone is probably my hardest thing that I have to do. So then I guess like you, it would just be like kind of like a cakewalk going from like the military side of like all the structure that you have and then going into the pro wrestling and be able to keep that structure, but then understanding like how to balance like all the personalities that you have. Exactly. Yeah. So military is definitely a, a good way to get yourself ready for for professional wrestling that's for sure and it helps you with you know your athleticism you have to do pt and stuff so you combine everything together you know and kind of sets you up for success honestly i feel like you're and you're doing it right too like when i was stationed in hawaii um i was actually looking for combative like i was trying to get into the mixed martial arts world because like right. hawaii, obviously like everybody's there i never thought about pro wrestling and i guess i probably should have because i've always <laughs> been a wrestling fan as long as i can remember right and, it's, it's just like it's a good fit and you're right like the structure between like pro wrestling and and the military just go hand in hand like mm -hmm. especially for sure you know? so something i never got to experience and something our viewers and our and our listeners won't understand well some of our listeners will understand because they get it what was it like being on the beast oh beast week yeah see that was the thing i never uh, did. like really i'll be honest um, they were they were building the beast as I was, as I was there, like they had just got approval to start beast, uh, to build the beast. Honestly, uh, it was like, it was slightly different of course, uh, than your, your regular weeks in BMT, but, uh, it was nothing like super, super hard. Uh, like you, it was hot. I can tell you that. Cause I was, I went in July. So July in San Antonio was humid and hot. So we were sweating a lot, but, uh, and when, when we get in full mop gear and everything, uh that's when everything got you know you, we were drenched basically yeah. sitting there but uh yeah it honestly it, other than it being hot it was a really good experience you know you got to be outside a lot you got to do a little a lot of different things other than just you know your marching and like learning your basics and everything like that uh and then of course you had the the combatives that you got taught i remember when we were doing the uh the big uh what are, what are they called uh the Q-tips, when we were fighting the Q with the Q-tips, right? Uh, I was waiting in a line. Usually when they pair people up, they pair people about the same size. And uh, I was standing there waiting to be paired up. And they were like, oh, yeah, we aren't going to we aren't going to pair you with him. He's too big. And the guy was just like, no, no, it's fine. The dude was, like, way shorter than me. He had to be, like, probably a foot, a foot and a half shorter than me. And I did not take it easy on him at <laughs> all. I just literally the entire time, full offense, just hitting him over and over again. Uh, I feel bad about it now, but uh, at that point in time, you know, being there, I was like, I got to beat him. I got to be the best. So uh, that was fun. Honestly, it's a lot of fun. Beast Week's a lot of fun. 
We graduated honors. That makes sense. Yeah. I was an element leader who got recycled. So. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you know what we'll talk about that story at another time, man. Just <laughs> all right. Sounds good. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, like all leadership positions that I held, like I ended up blowing because, like, even at uh, tech school, I was a yellow rope. Lost yeah. my rope. <laughs> Uh, in tech school, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really go for anything of that like that. I uh, kind of laid low and just focused on my classes and everything. Yeah, I felt like that's something I should have done, but I had this one tech sergeant man, like he was just adamant on me being involved in a rope program, and I was like, right. "Why me?" And he was just like, "I just, I just feel like," yeah, and he had like this cool like Latin accent, but he was like, "I just feel like, man, like you should sometimes, man." You know, you, <laughs> you step up in this, step up to the plate and be in a position of success. And I feel like that's you right, right there, man. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Success. Yeah. In our classes, they weren't necessarily, I'm not going to say they discouraged us from doing the ropes, but uh, they kind of discouraged us from doing <laughs> the ropes, you know. <laughs> like, they, the, the rope programs are great and everything, but for us, they just wanted to, you know, us to really focus on what we were learning. Yeah, we, um, that's, and I legit told people that I was like, I just want to, because I was six months out at San Angelo, so I was at right. Air Force Base, and I was like, I don't even want to, like, I don't want to be a rope, I just want to keep low-key, just go to school, have fun, right. come back out, and then just be mean, like. Exactly. And then work out that way, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, so, it's, it's so cool to be able to kind of relate and talk to somebody, because, you know. Clearly, you know, we've kind of been on the same field and we're actually, it's our, we're still mirrored, you know what I mean? Like even going to the first right. year. So where do you, like, let's pretend like we're in a time machine, right? And we go five years instead of future, man. Like, where do you see yourself? Um, I actually, I have my uh, goals planned out. Uh, I have a four year goal plan right now. And uh, by the end of my fourth year, where I would like to be is signed with some kind of major company. Clearly I'm, you know, reaching pretty, pretty high for doing that, but I'd like to be with, you know, someone like MLW, uh, impact, uh, you know, of course I would love to be with AEW or WWE if that's an option, but someone, someone on that, on that level, you know, any, anywhere around there, I'd love to be signed after four years. Uh, that's my, my big goal is to be there. Dude, that's, I mean, and it's not, it's not a lofty goal for you. I mean, like you're relatively young, you have, you're hungry, you know, and you yeah. have a military background. I mean, when you look at guys like Montez Ford, Ford and, uh, you know, even Lacey Evans, like right. they're, they're there, man. And you got to yeah. figure like how long they were training on the back end before they ever like made it. So yeah. It's same with like, like people like Flip Gordon, uh, right. pretty, pretty similar scenario, you know? Yeah, actually. And the you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, he did go AWOL a couple times. Like, he'll be open about it in his interviews. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, he's an amazing story to, like, to, to yeah, follow. Yeah, honestly. Too. And a great role model as well as for someone who was, like, who was or in the military. So, it's definitely cool to see who wants to travel down the same path. Um, so, tell me more about, like, like where, like, let's go, let's go, like, this route. Like, what's been the hardest bump you've taken so far? Your worst bump. The hardest, you mean like bump in the ring or like uh, a bump? Okay, uh, let's see. Um, maybe not a bump, but I took uh, a knee to the back of the head in one of my last matches, and it was uh, very stiff to say the least. Uh, it it, I was seeing pretty pretty light, uh, pretty white lights for a second there, um, and then as far as bumps, you know. I do a lot of off the top rope stuff. So uh honestly, let's see. I did a, a springboard frog, frog splash not too long ago and uh, I completely scorpioned myself. So uh yeah, when I went to land, uh I I just leaned forward a little bit too much and uh scorpioned myself. So that would probably be probably be one of the worst that I've taken. Dang. That that's rough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but usually, you know, uh, I'm pretty safe. So as long as you know how to take a bump, everything basically feels the same, you know? Yeah. For those who don't know, man, there's no spring underneath the 
and yeah. only three. No, <laughs> that's a that's a very that's a very that's a very big myth. <laughs> but um, you know, something else I want to ask, uh, like, what would be like words of inspiration that you would give, or things that you would say to somebody who's trying to break into the business? Um, first of all, is that it's possible. You know, when I uh, first was trying to get into the business, uh, I never thought about it, you know, at first because I was like, oh, well, there's no way a normal a normal Joe Schmo like me could walk in and be a professional wrestler, you know? Like, I was just like, there's no way that could happen. Uh, and then I saw my friend back in Delaware, uh, Dustin Wilson, and uh, he started wrestling. And uh, I was like, well, this is, this is possible for me then. So I started looking for schools. Uh, I finally found a school and, you know, I, I pursued it super hard. So first I'd let everyone know that it's, it's possible. So if you want to do it, find a school, uh, and just, just go for it. And then the other thing that I really think is important is don't be afraid at all. Cause even, uh, when you, when you're in the ring, if you're afraid, A, it's going to show in your posture and everything, which is important. And B, if you, a little bit of hesitation can cause disaster, honestly. Uh, if I'm about to go do something, even if it's for the first time, I, I'm not afraid at all and I don't hesitate at all. And that helps me so much in the ring because uh, hesitation will hurt you, honestly. So if you just go for it, for me at least 99% of the time, it ends up working out for me. I love how you caveat that 99% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> There's always that 1% error chance that. Like, of course. You're going you're gonna to take it. I give you, <laughs> we're, um, I was training, right? And uh, one of my friends was like, hey, I want to do uh, Randy Orton's power slam. Like you coming off the right. ropes. So as it came off the ropes, like he went to catch me. Mind you, I was like, all right, I, get, I know the premise of this idea, so I, I can, I think I can do this. Right. And it didn't work out. Like, my, I mean, I landed with my neck and my head and my shoulder oh, like no. all aligned together, and I scorpioned over. And um, my friend was like, "Oh my god, are you okay?" I was like, "Yeah." So I didn't jump. So we'll just run that back, and we'll do it again. And he was like, and "I'll jump this time." <laughs> yeah. And then he was like, "Are you sure?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. And I, and we went and we hit it perfect. And he was just like. He's like, are you sure you're okay? I was like, bro, I don't have time to worry about this. What's the next thing we're learning? <laughs> right, like, exactly. Yeah, okay. honestly, just going for it. it. It works. So the lesson to be learned, just go for it. Just do it. Exactly. So, <laughs> all right. So, man, listen, like that's a lot of the questions I have for you, but we have a world famous 10 count questions. So all right. we're going to put on the imaginary clock. It is not that tough of a test. You said you're a good test taker, so I'm sure you're going to pass with flying colors. So with right, that being see. said, put the imaginary clock up. Bing! There it goes. And our first question comes off by saying, Raw or SmackDown? Raw. Favorite finish? Uh, the uh, Coloss. Okay. Last show you binge watch? Oh, goodness. Uh, Black Clover. Okay. Favorite energy drink? Uh, I don't drink caffeine. Okay. That, that's a great answer. I'm not that well. Uh, Batman or Superman? Uh, Superman. Okay. Favorite movie? Uh, Zombieland. I can dig it. <laughs> Your favorite meal? Favorite meal? Oh, goodness. Uh, a good steak and a good sweet potato. Hey, hey, hey let's go. All right. Favorite cadence? Uh, it's the C-130 rolling down the street. Hey. <laughs> All right, hawk or animal? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, oh, hulk or animal? Hawk. You know, Legion of Doom. L-O-D. Uh, well, animal then. <laughs> yeah. Have you, are you not familiar with L-O-D? The Legion of Doom? Nope. Ooh, the Road Warriors, baby. You gotta get you, gotta get you caught up. And... Last but not least, my favorite question asked every single person, favorite curse word? Oh, uh, probably fuck, if we're being honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're definitely being honest. Well, that's it for our 10-count questions, man. Mr. Steele, 
the American Hammer. Can you let our listeners know where they can find you on social media? Uh, yeah, you can find me uh, on Facebook uh, at Roland Steel. Uh, I've got Instagram, which is at the American Hammer, all one word. And then uh, my Twitter is Roland Steel 21. That there he is, Roland Steele, the American Hammer, the man who was never off the clock because you know, foreign and domestic. That's what we do. We fight terrorism yes, everywhere, sir. all around the world. So, with that being said, this is the Three Count Podcast. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That is Roland Steele, and tune into the next episode. So, be there or be somewhere else. Hello, Three Count Podcast. If you enjoy what you're watching and you wouldn't mind going out your day to support us, go follow us on Twitter at Three Count underscore pod, Instagram, Three Count Pod. And if you want to look drift out like your boy JJ, go to prowrestlingtees.com slash the Three Count Pod, and it's the number three. Oh, and by the mention, we have a YouTube channel, so go check that out. The Three Count Podcast with the number three. JJ out.